So tonight, we take a deep dive into DC EV charging. Cash is on the table as we unearth some new grants. Rick discovers an electrical antique. Gary gets upset as we remove his conduit rig. And I reveal a word that 50% of electricians forget. Welcome to eFix TV, our fortnightly live stream here on Facebook and on YouTube. And if you're watching it live, you know which one you're on, but it's your comments that can drive us forward during this live stream. Or if you're watching us on Catch Up, please make sure you leave those comments and we will get back to as many as we can. And some of them will drive future live streams. So tonight's topic, Gordon, is all about DC charging. Now we've looked a lot at AC chargers, the installation of those and the best practices. So this is a little bit new for us as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's uh, certainly I was a bit nervous when you got that. We've got a we've got a fantastic unit behind us that we'll have a little look into a little bit later on. But I have got Gary a bit of a revelation for you. You know, we've done for years. We've done all this stuff on AC charging. Yes. Yeah. EV chargers being installing. Yeah. Actual thing we put on the wall isn't actually a charger. Okay. What is it then, Gordon? It's a connection point for the charger that's actually in the car. So it's really an interlock socket with a bit of software. So AC goes into the car, AC, and we know those batteries don't run on AC, so all the magic's actually happening within the actual car, but we've got a product today where the magic actually happens within that. Now, talking of magic, I've got Magic Person with me today. We're debuting for the first ever time, and this is a slot we're gonna need to be filled every fortnight. Until that, we'll obviously have repeated guest, Paul Elcock, so he has said he will do all of these until we can find a replacement, which is really nice of him. So, hello, Paul. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's gone a bit further now, Gary. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the cameras are now live. So, yeah, so that yeah. was a, a confirmation that if you keep seeing Paul in there, you know we haven't managed to replace him. Yes, and if anyone wants to pop down and join the man comments corner for the night so we can pension Paul off early, uh, then, yeah, put in the comments if you'd like to pop down. We might even treat you to a curry. OK, yes, and with that in mind, we didn't quite treat Paul almost to a curry, did we, until he got a little sneaky takeaway. But we've got a massively good subject to get into tonight, and we've got our sponsors, haven't we? We've got Hydra EV as our sponsors this evening of the show. So there they are along the bottom. So, yes, look at that lovely logo. That is a, a really good logo. Probably one of the strongest ones I've seen for a while. But if you've got a strong logo, we must have a couple of strong... Uh, I don't know what, uh, can't call them celebrities, we couldn't call them guests, we certainly can't call them speedy electricians, so we'll call them employees. So if we go to the green room, we've got, yeah, they're laughing already. We've got Ben Rundle, give us a wave, Ben. Okay, and we've also got Andrew Collins in there, okay. And they've got, for the first time, Gordon, you might not be aware of this, they had a little wager on who's going to be fast. And we will Ooh, see right. money change hands. Very nice, really well, stay tuned that, and you get the chance to join in as well. But first, actually, we best just turn to some uh, product news. News, okay. or loosely termed product news this week, because we've been, uh, uh, it was interesting, I put a video out yesterday with the AFDD tester found on the project that we uh, we put the uh, Luden board into, the uh, or also known as the Kenwood Chef. Now, people are obviously interested in that, but people took a lot of interest in the background stalking. We've just got an image there. And the clock behind me was of particular interest to people. And uh, a lot of people wondered what that clock was. And if anyone wants to know, that's a clock two, spelt with a, it's a Q. All right. Lock. Okay. So you lock, yes. And just let me see. Garrett probably wrote the title of that one. So does that look as if it picks the number where it is in the hour? Does it sort of... Yeah, the pick... words change, oh, yeah. Right, okay. The words that's change. Better. So it's not even in a clock shape? No, it's not in a clock shape. And it's, okay. yeah, it's popular, but a lot of people notice that in the back. It's amazing. I love the attention that our viewers play at stuff. So hopefully they'll background stalk around us tonight and see what we've got in, in behind us. Massive clues to videos we're making in the future, no doubt, just lurking around here. Now, with that in mind, was it mains power or battery powered? It's mains power. Oh, so it runs on AC. It so runs on AC. Newer ones are more powerful on DC. I'm sure we'll get to that at That's some point. It. And faster. Yes. Time goes faster on DC, it does. as we'll hopefully find out with our guests a little bit later on. You mentioned a Kenwood there. Yeah. Okay, so Kenwood Mixer. Mm -hmm. That had a little role to play, didn't it? We've uh, managed to unearth the first ever AFDD tester. Is that true? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's pretty reliable. It was. Uh, if you watch the video, it trips. Every time it's switched on, the AFD just goes out straight away. There are other people out there trying to invent their own AFDD testers, okay? Other well-known, probably, YouTubers as well. They've created their own in a wheelie bin. I actually missed out on a trick there, so it was just the old Kenwood mixer you've been trot away. out the Kenwood chef, and it uh, trips every time. Only in that socket, though. That's oh. One of the strange things. Anyway, there's more work to do on that. And then in other product news, obviously, uh, people didn't realise we featured in a video that went viral on the BBC earlier this, uh, this week. Uh, you didn't see that? 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> got it now. <laughs> okay, yes, we yeah. did, yes. Now, people may have seen the story of Shutter Nan, but you didn't realise she was actually outside the door here at Lineside Studios. We'll just bring the video in of what happened. You might recognise that switch and that door. There she goes. Wow. Hoisted up. Need to, oh, obviously, what running out to so what, what, ran out of spot, there was a problem, and then we, we brought it down. So we have now just coupled that switch back up to the tool from above that I'm sure we'll be seeing later on. Yeah, yeah we, they were also, um, Ben and and, um, Andrew were fighting over that, weren't they, to see who was going to do the cooing from above. And I think Ben pulled rank and has decided to sit under the bag. So that's going to be good as well. Nice, exciting times. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so good to see uh, many regular viewers on already. We have got an interesting show tonight. Say, so looking at something we haven't done. A big shout out to Griff Thomas there, who's at the, at the, the premiere in in Leamington Spa. Now, we can't go into it on this show because it's a family show, but I've heard some interesting things going down at that, uh, at that premiere in when people look through the windows. Yeah, Paul. when the curtains aren't pulled, maybe there's a moment in time there. Yeah, yeah. Also, I'd like to give a big shout out to somebody who's uh, asked for it, but we're certainly gracious enough to do it because he sent us a wonderful email in and he also sent a lovely message against the uh, college connections that he sat in on as well. We'd like to give a big shout out to Sean Dempsey in tonight's show as well. So thank you, Sean, for the lovely email. We've all read it and obviously that comment you sent through on one of the, I think it was on Instagram that you sent as well, which was fantastic. So it's all good support. Are we having some great comments coming through? There's loads of comments Hopefully coming in. Paul's busily typing away over there, else he'll be punished with coming back in a fortnight, okay, <laughs> if that's the case. Do you want to bring our guests in? Shall we start nice and early? Shall it we is. this time? Shall yes, we bring let's, them in? Let's, let's get them in because we're going to need some help on DC charging. We it's our are. pleasure to welcome Andrew Collins, Head of Partnerships at Hydra EV, and Ben Rundle, Director of Business Development mm, at Hydra that sounds TV. really important. There we go. come. <laughs> Just take your seat under the tool from above, Ben. You've won that shot. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Great. Andrew, you're over here. Lovely. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Oh, you both smell gorgeous, by the way. So when you come in there, there was a, there's a whiff of we've been to the car, I would suggest. There's a whiff of pack or a band there, yes, Gary. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, a little bit of musk. Yeah, so fantastic. <laughs> well, obviously, as, as always, thank you very much for joining us on the show. No, thank thank you. you for being the sponsor of the show as well. But thank we're going to need 60 seconds to some. First, we'll get a little bit inside of you. People will be trying to pick up the clues as they go along to find out if there's any electrical background in there. So maybe we'll start with you first, Andrew. So would you like to tell me all about yourself in 60 seconds? I'll do my best. Best. Yes. Um, so as you alluded to at the start there, I say my name's Andrew. I'm looking after head of partnerships here at Hydra. Um, prior to that, I've had a couple of years within the kind of EV industry as such. So predominantly on the sales side of things, but also most recently now looking after installers and partnerships as well. So looking to bring on as many as possible to work with Hydra as well as utility companies and end users as well. Okay, very concise, very clear. Yeah. I like that one. So no pressure now again, Ben. You're no, following no. Andrew. That seems to be a theme today. Pete and I got a lot today, haven't we? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I've been uh, in the energy management industry for the last sort of seven, eight years. I've um, been at Hydra since the start, so we're talking almost three years now. Um, it's pretty much it. Six seconds rather than 60 seconds, to be honest. Mm. Didn't mention you went down the gym. What, what bit of information would you like to suggest, Andrew, nice and early, that we missed out there on maybe the, the life of Ben? Um, I would say perhaps the fact that you're one of the founders here at Hydra. No. <laughs> <laughs> what else? The eight months he spent. Well, ah, right, yes. Yeah, the, possibly the eight months maybe as a, an apprentice. Apprentice what, though? Electrician. Okay. Just thought I'd get that out nice and early. Mm, not me. Mm. No, not you. No, 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 Ben. No, very the one that I spot for down the gym when you're struggling with those weights. The I'm one. there to save the day. I know That's that. So, yes. Yeah. So that, that sort of sets the scene a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. That it does. Yeah, it does. And, and three years, just to put out there, three years is actually quite a long time in the EV industry because we're still yeah. quite a, a new industry, but we're going to dive into that. But yes, on that bombshell you put in there, Gary, it is time for the audience at home to play along because we obviously have to find out our guests what they're like on the tools. And it's time for you to put your times in to see. And if you, if you guess correctly, you could win a prize and the opportunity to give Jenny a call on the burner phone. So what you have to do is either put in Ben and three hours, 52 minutes, or Andrew, one week, seven days, if you think Andrew was the fastest. So we'll just wait for some of those times to come in. The regular people know how it works. And they're already in. And I like the way, Andrew, there you said you spoke to electricians as part of your role. Okay, so yes. that doesn't mean you get any of the skills from just oral communications, but you spent eight months practicing to be like that's quite a long time you could almost have got qualified three times to work in a domestic dwelling in that time so uh yeah well not specifically an electrician but 
eight months apprenticeship dealing with MRD meters. Bigger. That's that's, yeah, that's yeah. that sounds like electrician to me, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Sounds like a wind like it back now. Sounds like an excuse. Yeah. Oh, sounds yeah. like an excuse <laughs> to me. I like, <laughs> I like how you talk. Yeah, yeah. We know this one's going to work out, Andrew. Don't we? Yeah. <laughs> so it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's all good. Well, everyone's yeah, everyone's in. Everyone's betting on Ben at the moment. So there we go. Plenty of times coming in. They're saying it's going to be fast with a, with a hint of an electrical background. Yes. And, oh yes, flooding in now. Here we go. Yes, that's it. So just rightly give me so. A little... Rightly so. Safe bet. Safe bet. Yeah, definitely. Just set me up to fail. I like that. Thank you. Well, I haven't seen this actually, so I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued to see what happens here. You can keep those times coming in if you haven't put one in. It is your first time that does count, but uh, yeah, Marcus Barrett's in. He thinks you're going to be really slow. Alan Chan is in the bearded spark. Yeah, everyone's all the regulars are locking in those times. So best we. Uh, Let's, let's cut to some action here. I'm going to see this myself. Yes. Right, here we go. Who's up first? That's always a worrying sign, I think, if you go first. Oh, oh sorry, yeah. Andrew. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> it's not you. Oh, 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 there's a new one there. The seated Remo. I think it's the first time we've ever had anyone sit it's, down on the job. Straight out the office onto a chair. I love it. Wow. It's a controlled approach. It's not slapdash, that's all. Did you come straight from the swimming pool? Because you've got to take your cap off. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Less hair makes me streamline. Oh, right. like oh there we go. See? Look right. at this. The great right. Daley Thompson used to shave off all of his hair that you could see when he was running in the decathlete. Uh, to, Did he? To, yeah, to try and make himself that little bit faster. And I like the way you've used that as well, Andrew, in order to speed go. yourself well, we're up. Not looking I'm at the... Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. We're up. Yes. That's I thought that was going to be a challenge there. We're not actually looking at the pipe. Round. We wanted to name this Ben, didn't we, Ben? You come up with... Ben Bend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bend, yeah. A slow Ben, <laughs> yeah, would be a good one as well. Look at the right. We'll see, we've got, we did well in the first one. We were struggling on the on the thirty millimeter section between there. <laughs> this is where it all went wrong. Okay, yeah. so uh, okay. This we're, we're picking up a hint of that. It's gone yeah. wrong. <laughs> Remember this? That's been edited down, and it is one of the race. Oh, there's the screwdriver nice gone. This one. Yep. You like these, though, didn't you? Like my little uh, twin earth strippers, or brilliant, yeah. No, they're just single core strippers. Automatic wire automatic strippers, we call them, Gary. See, I'd use a knife. That's why I ain't got a clue what's going on on these things. <laughs> yeah. So you back down for the screwdriver. You dropped on the floor. Oh, yeah. Right. Bit of touch of concentration. Oh, 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 a bit of shake there. Did you see that? Oh, I did. Yeah. 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 A little bit of less. No nerves. Just temperature. No. no yeah. what? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh look at that. No, there's some shake there. Two hands putting the wire in there. Recommend a bit of magnesium in your diet. Maybe a supplement tablet to sort of get rid of that. I don't think Ben's got anything to laugh about because he equally shakes. When he comes in there. Oh, right, here we go. Have you, uh, have you uh, started losing your hair recently, Andrew? Uh, this morning when I was coming in. Right, okay. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. Yesterday it was very different. Yeah, I bet it was. Yeah, we all, all got, hang on, we got oh, another one. down again, another sit sitting around. Ramo. Ramo. Take, take the easy. rest when it arrives. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what a rainbow is? No, no, you said no. you'd watch one of them before. <laughs> one of them. <laughs> one of them. We do the Ramo in most of them. So here we go. There's Earth in the Back Box. Yeah. Probably got a hint of uh, underpants there. We didn't get a full JB maybe later on where we see what you're wearing underneath those back jeans. Yeah. It looks like you've got a corporate work wear. Is that the case? You know, white car. Both of you got a white car. White T-shirt, black trousers and very polished shoes. The best two pairs of shoes ever seen on the race walk. Mm. So we just got this. That. We just yeah. got the socket to connect. Now yeah. you thought between the pair of you, you thought these were all push fit connectors because every time we went to take them off, it was a miracle if they all stayed in. <laughs> so uh, as they go in. All right here we go. Do you fish much? Do you no. Know you're fishing? No, no you, not at all. You seem to sit down there nicely, not moving much, <laughs> obviously, uh, and uh, hoping something goes into your net. Okay, concentration. I do drive quite a bit, so maybe the sitting is just that as well. Yeah, it's uh, not the biggest seat in the world. Right, so CPCs are in. You went for the one hole, I think, um, from yeah. what I saw with Ben, you went for the two yeah. hole approach, mm. which I quite mm. like as an approach, mm. but not necessarily when I'm racing. So you do a bit of painting at the weekend, so I mean, like painting pictures and stuff. Uh, I, not recently. You've done a bit in the past. A few years back, perhaps. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're holding that screwdriver like a paintbrush, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like sort of... Running down Magnolia. No, I that's what you were on about. I didn't think you were doing any sort of portraits. There we go. So we're nearly there. All right. Now I've got... Yes, Are you sure? We say there? nearly. Some of these been oh, in and out. Yeah, I can swear these are them. making a repeat appearance. Yeah, they've gone in and come back out. So I said most, yeah. most of the connections are push fit. So you've just got to get back to the wall at some point, sometime today. Yeah. Okay. Right. You said this was edited, right? Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> it was horrifically long the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got slightly faster as we went along. So there we go. Two screws away. You've got to spring right, up from go. the seated position. Oh, there there we go. Go. oh right. In, Straight in. in. And Ben's falling on with a seated position there. Is it a company policy whenever you get anywhere you have to sit down? Driving around cars Gary all the yeah, time yeah. <laughs> not an EV and... <laughs> well, well if we're going to mention hair on the first one I think it's only right we've mentioned hair when it comes to Ben that is very well you know scaped that hair I'm not talking about that one I'm talking about the one on your head um, so yeah very well scaped Thanks. are you a scaper 
what in terms of what shave my own head yeah yeah do, you, oh, do a little professional bit of professional barber professional shout out to my barber yeah shout, shout out to your barber like they're yeah, actually yeah. watching yeah yes. there will be now we'll yeah, send them absolutely. the link that's good so you got the guns for this right. so hopefully this will be a quick one you, you no, were this very is looking all right here this is relaxed into it methodical. methodical i mean you everything you you're looking for the clippers that's what all right was. okay yeah, the yeah automatic wire strips we like yes. to call them around here <laughs> okay so now we're straddling the uh ramo so just gently does everything just just precisely stripping the ends yep. back down. No rush, we're not in a race, so we'll just get there when we get there. Yeah. How often do you go to the gym? Uh, five, six days a week. Okay, not the seven that hardcore people like me do, morning and night. Yeah, if I said seven, you would have said eight. Well, just, <laughs> there's no rest for the wicked. Got to have a day off, Gary, rest. Uh, no, I, I don't have a day off, I just do the legs again. Yep. Uh, most people neglect, neglect their legs, as I noticed with you. I'm not sort of one that neglects any part of my body. So when you're I'm saying injured. you use us, uh, running as an active recovery session, do you? Oh, you run there and back, it's uh, yeah. 15 miles yeah. away as well, my gym. So there we're back we down right, we're back again. Down. Looks like Ramo's out early. Hold on, trying to pocket the wire. And we're back down. So the first no, time I've had anyone try to pocket the wire strippers as well. well. They're 120 quid. I mentioned that earlier on. They did. Yeah. It's from Essex. So uh, what do you expect? <laughs> yeah. Yes, ladies, he is from Essex. I know now it all drops into place, doesn't it? The haircut and the physique. Yeah, the Essex boy. He's actually trying to mask the accent, but he can come out when he's down at uh, somewhere like, I don't know, Weatherspoons on a Saturday night. Oh, yeah. yeah, fighting talk. Yeah, there we go. So we've just got to connect this. You, you went in with the CPC and split it, did you? I did, yeah. yeah I think all that's right. the right approach. Yeah, it's good. You've got a whiff of someone who spent more than uh, eight months doing a bit of wiring, hasn't it? So we go cut those out. Oh, they're a little bit short. Oh, no, you got away with that. I think we'll be okay. <laughs> So combination strippers and just a few connections were done. And again, you, did you twist them on all the time? So you had a bit of hand twisting, did you? Oh, that? hold on, hold on, there's a shortcut there. Oh, 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 there. Oh, there's there's one. One. We have to pull like, that, haven't we? Like piano wires. Yeah, from, we need to check they're not coming out the top. So we're going to split the CPCs, we know that. We know you fiddled around and twisted it. We did change screwdrivers for you. I think uh, Rick you was did, trying yeah. to hamper you, wasn't he? Rick's yeah. always, yeah. when Rick's got, and I'll use my usual word, a whiff of being quicker than them. And yeah, yeah he tends that. to give you half the kit. Did he explain very well how to go up and down the tube, or did you have to have me step in and give you a... No, we Definitely had to step in. Yeah, yeah. masterclass. Yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, from that point of view, I was Rick, a big Rick's help. starting to lean in on the bin. Yeah. <laughs> you know, He's that. been there a while. <laughs> <laughs> he did the, yeah, he did them back to back these first. Two, I will yeah. say he didn't do that on mine. So. Oh, oh. all right. But he was on yours so long. He's actually run out of the effort. <laughs> <laughs> the longest time Rick's gone without eating. Right, here we go. Right, here we go. <laughs> Two screws away from completing. Hair has not moved all day, has it? It's immaculate, yeah. isn't it? Thank it's you. Absolutely immaculate. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually moved down your back of your neck. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, well, if you want to retrieve it at some point, yeah. you might be able to find it. Here we go, then. So, we are, uh, that looked neck and neck to me, but what did until this bit. Yeah, here we go. There we go. Wow. Ah. Yeah, it was a long afternoon. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. So, confidence still, Ben? So with the, 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 the intelligent money is on you, yeah, okay, so you're still confident? Yeah, I'm confident, go yeah. back yourself, always. Absolutely, and, and you're not very confident, are you, Andrew? Not at all, I just enjoy being here. Okay. So yeah. I'm taking part. Oh, oh right, yeah, you're, there we go. You're playing all the losers oh, cards. Oh, there was a wager. You've the, got the to take tiniest hope that you'll win. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> there was a wager mentioned at the start of this? Was, there was. Got, was have, have we got the, the money? Got the money, boys? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Put it on the table then, so if someone's walking away with 20. Oh, crisp 10. The thing is, like, what if it's a draw, Gary? Does that mean we I'll keep, keep it? it? Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. keep it. Yeah, yeah. No, if it's a draw, so <laughs> drop them down there. Someone's yeah. Anyone on the board you recognise? Any names? Um, couple at the top, yeah. yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on. What do you mean? I mean, I'm not going at the top. Let's make that clear. Recognise them. So who do you recognise? Well, there's the uh, the old infamous Dean Haywood from right at the top. Okay, Haymaker, yeah, Dean Haymaker Haywood. Anyone else you recognise on there? Nick Tucker. Nick, oh, he's up there as well. Oh, oh no. Oh, that is pressure. Okay. A lot of EV people up there, Gary. There is a lot of EV people. Oh, EV, EV people. people, that's easy for yeah. me to Just say. look at the display on here yeah, while we're here. This. I do like their logo. Yeah. Look at that. It looked, well, it looked better there. It was picturing this me. There we look go. At that. that is pretty cool, isn't it? Mm. One of the best looking displays we've had on. Right, okay. Well, we're looking at this board here. We're thinking, you know, people think we leave gaps. Yeah. Oh, yeah, hang on. We leave gaps. That yeah. would be nice. That would be yeah. four minutes and ten. Yeah. yeah. Okay, in there. That's in the out, right in the outrageous zone. Uh, well, we can go for we can go for Ben first. Okay, so first of all, Ben. So yeah. there's two walls. I know yeah, we're and I'm actually and I'm on the wrong one, Gary. So I'm no, going to have to no. shuffle my way back over here. Oh, Sometimes we want oh, people to climb over me together. Huh? Composure. So we're in here. So really? Uh, yeah, we're in here. We're oh, in no. here. Right now, we're shuffling around here. Right. So, so you want to be bottom of this wall, don't you? <laughs> you do want to be bottom. Well, not top. But we're not going bottom here. Actually, not going bottom. No, no. Ben, you did this in seven minutes and eleven. 
So oh. you're just sitting in there behind behind Jamie. Oh, there was some there was some, there oh, was some no, mentions earlier there. on about just... somebody with one hand. Yeah, that yeah, Vienna yeah. down there. Would, would Vienna have been? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so yes. Vienna, just have a little look at Ben. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Ben, how do you feel now? Yeah. Uh, mortified. Yeah. At least. Yeah. And, and, and Andrew, are you are you? Do you think you're on this wall or that wall? Not definitely this wall. No. Definitely this. You definitely, are right, actually. Definitely. You are right. And actually, you did this in. Yeah, now get this. We're ready for this. I'm, I'm <laughs> shuffling around here. I'm shuffling around. Oh, don't play with me. Yeah. Don't play with me. You actually did this in, yeah, six minutes 58. Oh, so he's under. Oh, yes. So... <laughs> Sorry, say that again. I lost. <laughs> Just for those people who didn't hear you. That <laughs> I lost. I mean, I'm trying not to look smug, but I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm very happy with that. In fact, I might just look at it again. <laughs> I've never seen anyone so happy to be on this wall. No, I'm absolutely love it. That. You're chuffed with being on the slow wall. I love yep, it. That's Andrew, great. Well done. Thank you. Well done. It's going to be a long night now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've already been pre well. I'd just like to say to you, congratulations. Thanks very much. Yes. Yeah, thank you. What are you going to spend your winnings on? Um, probably an electrician's course, I think. Yeah. <laughs> See if I can get any better. Well, I'd say some sick. people are throwing good money after bad on that one. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that was really good fun. Um, the times are pretty consistent across. You actually got quicker and quicker. You actually plateaued after the first one. Oh, OK. Yeah, so, you're, yeah, so you, 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 you probably felt quicker, but it was going similar pace all the way mm. through where you managed to pull the absolute rabbit out of the hat on the last run. Do you know I was shouting at you at one point? Yes. When I, yes, I tried yeah. to encourage you across the you line. Were. Yeah, yeah. You were, which made me nervous. Did you think at any point today down. that you'd won? No, not I at all. I kept it away from you nicely, had I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I honestly had no idea. Oh, I knew. It was good. I enjoyed that. Mm. So did I. And obviously, we do like to keep the workshop nice and tidy at all times. So that means somebody has to clean up, Gary, doesn't it? So, so yes. So. Oh, there we go. So. <laughs> there we go. Ben's cleaning up. Yeah. Maybe they'd watched an episode before they come. They'd <laughs> 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 a twig that this was coming their way. Okay. Maybe they weren't so keen to part with any money. And obviously, people know how that works. Doncaster Cables send us the cable. Our guests turn it into scrap and clean up for us and put it in the green cable bin. We cash it in when it's full. And uh, green cable give us cash. And if you'd like to get your hands on one of those bins, there is a link in the description. We did a fantastic interview with Ed at the weekend as well, explaining a little bit more about that service. If you haven't seen that video, yeah, give that a watch. But a lot of people have signed up for it since watching that. Yeah, that's good. So. Yeah, no, links in the description, by all means, go along. We like the fact, we like the green element of it as well. We like the inconvenience that it takes away from you. No putting it in the van, driving effectively to a scrapper. They come to you, don't they? Takes all but the most away. of all, we like the cash. Well, yeah, I was trying not to say that. We yeah, do, we do like it. the cash. Everyone likes scrap copper cable, but unless they've chopped the cable the, off the, the DC only problem I've got is, And it links to comments corner, we'll bring them in. Yeah. Last time we had any scrap cash, I went out with this gentleman here and ended up in a nightclub that I didn't want to go to because you absolutely was leaning on me to go, weren't you? <laughs> well, it was freezing cold outside. We've been gabbing for 45 minutes. We went to get a taxi. I says, come on, let's just go for a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I had that fated video that you recorded, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one dancing around a nightclub with a silly hat on. Right, into the meat and two veg now, Gordon. Yeah? Yes, so we're looking at... Yeah, DC charging. Now, at first, anything when anything new turns up here, we get a little bit nervous, especially when it comes on a pallet wrapped in shrink wrap. It's always like, ooh, that looks air heavy. And, uh, yeah, complicated new bit DC chargers. But actually, they seem quite simple. But what's the big difference between an AC charger and a DC charger, apart from the name? Type of electricity that comes out of it, just just to jump yeah. in with my technical yeah. knowledge. Absolutely, yeah. just, God, didn't you know that, Gordon? Thank you very much. <laughs> very much like you said earlier in the show. So AC is is um, basically just feeding power to the onboard charger in a, in a vehicle, whereas DC is direct to battery, so it's a lot faster, a lot more efficient as well. Mm. Now I need you to unpack faster for me because obviously I would keep hearing, you know, seven and a bit kilowatts at home, and then yeah. maybe eleven kilowatts that we had out in our yard, and then you see all these other ones, and they they all sort of use the word fast. So mm. AC fast and DC fast. Well, so why is AC not fast and DC is fast? Well, AC is generally classed as fast charging, and then DC is normally rapid to ultra rapid. Right. Um, it is down to the technology in the vehicle and what the vehicle is actually allowed to accept. So some manufacturers they charge more to accept twenty two kilowatt AC but you're still talking six to eight hours, depending on the vehicle. Whereas DC is direct to the delivery to the battery, which is, you're talking hour and a half upwards, sometimes even quicker. There's some chargers out there for 15 minutes for them 
20 to 80 percent. Got any practical examples to help me? I've out unpacked this for you, Gary. Oh, so yeah. Obviously, in a video we borrowed a uh, Corsair E because you wanted to relive your youth with a large speaker <laughs> in the boots. Yeah. So we just bring in the Corsair E. So we can remind me what a Corsair E looks like. But I, I uh, borrowed it as well <laughs> and uh, tried to find you. Um, so I had to recharge, and then I eventually found you down at the golf club oh, with wish. your friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, down yeah. there. So the Corsair E, the inbuilt, yeah, charger. Yep. will accept only seven kilowatts single phase AC. That's your lot. Yep. So, so let me get this right. So because the AC is coming out of what everyone calls a charger, it's a mm -hmm. socketed thing. What did you call it? Socketed something or other? Socketed, yeah. Or, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, just brings it out. And it doesn't matter what you're putting in there. So even if I went to a, a bigger AC one, it would only take seven kilowatts. That's it, yeah. Oh, wow. So a lot of people, people know that. Does it say on the dash? Don't be, don't, you know, don't be eluded by a fast charger because AC maximum seven kilowatts. Yeah. Does it say that? Does it help you? Do, or you got to know that from the car? Well, some people don't, do they? Because they just... The, well, the, I didn't. The, mm. Yeah, you, yeah. You, then that's... And, yeah, so it causes a lot of problems. It, you can never do anything. So, But again, on the flip side, on the customer side, people invest in putting 22 kilowatt three-phase chargers in. And yet, most of the time, there's very few cars on the market that will accept that. So we've got a, a Tesla Model 3 as well that we found... Uh, Another people who you're you're quite well acquainted with lately as well. Yeah, the, uh, the traffic get, police. Yeah, they keep finding me. They do bless uh, me. So there's a that's a yeah a, a model three that has an 11 kilowatt charger in it, three phase, still seven kilowatts on single phase. Right. That's it. Oh, okay. So even the Model X, which is the you know one of the original Teslas, so yep. that, that the unreliable Model X. Is that the gold wing ones? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always break. Yeah. They always break. Yeah. So that has 16 kilowatt charger in three phase. So that's. On yeah. three phase. On three yeah. phase AC. Yeah. It's an it's an education piece for us because we get a lot of calls from people that are asking, I've got a three phase twenty two kilowatt charger, but I'm only getting eleven kilowatt, or seven kilowatt. Yeah, that would have it's, been me. The information is not filtering down from manufacturers. So when people are going to dealerships and buying these cars, we found that the people in the dealership, salesmen, saleswomen, they don't actually know what the vehicle can accept. Yeah. What are the chances? So people are, are being sold stuff and it's quite misguided, we found. Mm. Right, okay. Yeah. Is, there, is, there, is there anyone got a decent one in there? What would I need uh, to buy? So a lot of the time it's an expensive upgrade on the car. Right. So the manufacturer will fit 11 and you have to pay, it can be like 1,500 pounds to get a 22 kilowatt charger installed in the car. So back in your day, that would have been cassette player to CD, wouldn't it? Well, exactly. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so that's the upgrade. So yeah, it's a good way of looking at exactly. it. For the but if you, if you want to go top of the range, if you want to treat yourself, yeah. so the Rolls-Royce Scepter, all right. Yep. Okay. Spectre. Spectre. Yeah. Spectre. I thought we'll it had a James Bond. Yeah, later, right? I'm we'll saying James back, Bond We'll circle thing. back to that. That does come with a 22 kilowatt charger. And no. for that price of car, you'd expect it to, <laughs> wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. Just, <laughs> for anyone who's got one of them, just bang it in the comments how you've got on doing the charging. So we'd love to hear yeah. your stories about the Spectre. Well, apparently some of the early adopters into, into uh, EV charging have, have, have cashed out. And yeah, they're probably, yeah, you know, Dean Haywood, he'd be in there. He, he, he's, he's got one of them. He's, he's got a fleet of them, I bet. <laughs> yeah. them, yeah. He's got one he uses for the shops and then one for special days. Yeah, he's got the windows blacked out, uses it for his ladders when he's going out doing the job. So that's apparently... <laughs> Yeah, now he's moved into civils where all the money is in EV charging. <laughs> but, um, right. but to bring it back, we'll look at the VW Buzz. Yeah, so just we'll like this for, one. for a uh, yeah. Now this is this yeah. is a great, well, lovely. That, so they're now touting these out as obviously you can get a proper van version of that. It's got an 84 kilowatt battery. Okay. So to put that into context, uh, it's built in built in with an 11 kilowatt charger. So that, that's better than the Corsa you had, yeah. A little bit, but well, it'd be still seven kilowatt on single phase. So it's only 11 kilowatt yeah, on, on three, three phase. phase. So, you've got on three so phase. you know, you pull up somewhere that's got AC charge and you're going to be there for six hours to get an 80% charge. Good job you sleep in the back then, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it. And depend on the version. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You sleep, sleep in the back of a van. Uh, but if you were to couple it up to something like the 30 kilowatt charge behind us, DC, straight into it, then you'd get, uh, you'd be charging in two hours. Right. Okay. So just, yeah. So DC, the rules for DC are different for the battery because it's not turning AC to DC that DC can just jump straight onto the battery is that the idea just force its way in so if I had that Corsair again mm -hmm. is, that, is that restricted or could I put 30 kilowatts onto the Corsair you'd easily get 30 kilowatts into mm -hmm. the Corsair so I could not that I want to own a Corsair <coughs> sorry but the I could charge it a lot quicker by just the fact that I get to a DC one yeah oh right okay that makes mm -hmm. logical sense so you've got to be looking for them then isn't it yeah, so this is where does a business choose to put in a nice big row of 22 kilowatt chargers that might be running at 7 or 11 kilowatts, or do you spend a little bit more 
But well, actually, it could be less actually, because he put less units in to, to achieve it. Well, so that's Andrew. What's, yeah. what's the feedback on that? What, what's going in and, and what's the thing? Because I'd imagine if I turned up as sort of a, a person who may spend a lot of time on the road repping, maybe, or something like that, that charging speed is quite important to me to get back out of the office, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. I think anywhere where there's potentially fleets or, like you said, a high footfall areas, the, the DC charging has got to be your number one priority, really, from that side of things. Because of that utilisation and uptime of the chargers, you're only going to be on it for somewhere between maybe... 30 minutes up to maybe two hours tops, but that means you're going to get much more charge for that time that you're on that charger. So it's ideal for fleets and high footfall areas. Yeah, it makes logical sense. Ben? It's an education piece again. When, when businesses are talking about investing in EV charging, the lion's share of that's in civils. So when you're educating them on the difference between AC and DC and what they're actually going to get out of that in terms of revenue and getting people in and out, it's we're finding that people are going choosing DC. It's a little bit more expensive initial investment, but you're overall return on investment and actual ease of use for your users is a lot better. Electrician starts to worry now, I would suggest, Gordon. So we're used to wiring AC final circuits. Yeah. Is it just an AC final circuit and all the magic's done well, in the People are already asking in the comments. Darren Cranis is already halfway in. He's, he's asking, <laughs> what's the power supply for, the, for, the, for that one? So we have put a little video. You know, something comes in, obviously, the first thing we'd like to do is try and take it to, to bits. Mm. Um, so we just had a little look inside so you can see what's inside the charger. Well, since we've got Hydra EV here, we thought it might be worth having a look actually inside a DC charger because at first you think something scary, looks big, looks scary, got lots of connectors we may not be familiar with. So let's have a little look under the cover. But before we do that, let's just have a look. You can obviously tell when you've got a DC charger because you end up with a, with a plug like this with the combined charging system. So this is what we're normally used to seeing, this top half on an AC charger. Underneath, we've got these massive pins here for the DC charger. So that's how you know. All cars pretty much have them on now. But let's have a look under the cover. Release that there, there's a nice satisfying sound and a click. We hear the click under the door. Click means that's the, that's the tamper protection for the smart charge point regulations. Now, at first, looks like there's busy, quite a lot going on here. For the electrician wiring this in, it's really quite simple. You just bring in your three-phase supply at the, at the bottom of the enclosure here through the gland and straight in to the RCBO device that's in there, rated 63 amps for this, which is the same size supply you'd use on a twin 22 kilowatt charger we have outside here. In some for other familiar things, you will notice the surge protection built in there and next to it, an MID class meter, which you need to have on board if you're going to use it for actually charging people for charging or billing, as we call it. Uh, in there, next to it, another gland hole to bring in a data cable that you route up to the front of the uh, charger here. If you're having hardwired data, you can see we've got some options in there for SIM card if you want to use the mobile network, which is obviously advantageous in lots of places. So this is the brains running the charger to the outside world that you communicate with. Underneath, we've got an RFID tag, but that could be swapped out for a payment uh, device if you're on the uh, if you're worried about the. Uh, so public charge point payment regulations that we're going to be looking at a little bit later on. Other bits in here, we've got a power supply here, tertiary power supply to run the unit itself. And above that, an insulation monitoring device that looks at the insulation of the cable going out to the car. When you're AC charging, that's actually inside the car. But for this, you're sort of bypassing the car's own electronics. So it's monitoring essentially the quality of that connection out to the uh, the car itself. And remember, when you're on DC charging, these days you can have voltages up to 800 volts, depending on the architecture of the car. So there's, there's, uh, I'd certainly want to be monitoring that if it was, uh, if it was electronics I was looking after. Some more uh, brains here running the power conversion electronics, which are on the back of the unit here. We can't get in there. I'm expecting there's a substantial heat sink inside there. But you know, considering we're converting 30 kilowatts of power, this is actually still quite a compact unit when you consider the size of a, a solar inverter. We're probably looking at sort of solar inverter size here uh, for familiar arity. And then finally the output to the car so we can see obviously the AC side vanishing behind into the power electronics and then re-emerging miraculously as DC here. And essentially we've got a plus and minus out of the car of one of which those lines is protected by an enormous fuse which if things have gone absolutely horrendously wrong. And on the other side, we've got a little shunt there where for, uh, for current monitoring. From the electrician's point of view, it looks like a simple installation. 
Just like I say, you did that in one take, folks, and that was pretty impressive in yourself and the knowledge that Gordon's got on this stuff. You've lived this dream. But I just uh, focused in on what the electrician has got. I've done that look like one cable into the bottom of a RCD. That seems yeah, well, like, yeah, Just easy. pretty much like an AC charges, one cable plus a data connection. What well, might not be because you could be using the, uh, the, the, the mobile network. Uh, but I would say, obviously, if you look at that, a lot of people sort of see it in the comments, it's, it's a well laid out bit of kit in terms of, you know, it's a well laid out panel. They haven't uh, shoehorned everything in there. There's, there's plenty of space. There's, there's bits that look like you can maintain them if you need to. And uh, yeah, even the, even the little details on the uh, on the uh, on the heat shrink eye dents on the end of the cable. So that's it's yeah. Missed your Routler's rule of enclosures, didn't it? Where you made it the box wasn't quite as big as you needed it to be. Yeah, yeah exactly. You got the right size box there. Yeah, if I had a, if I had a built that, yeah, it would have been a third smaller, but there would have been stuff hanging out like the Hanging Gardens of Babylon in there. Yes. So that's, <laughs> as it normally goes. But so, so. no fear from the electrician's point. Do you totally agree? Is that what you find now, Andrew, on site when you're going out and speaking to contractors? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, I think our approach is always very transparent. We always say to the guys, you know, you're welcome to come down to our head office, get hands on with the kit, and when we go out and de demonstrate what we can do and what the kit can do. The feedback has always been that it's well laid out and there's plenty of space and it's what we asked the, uh, the installer said what is it that you need from a, a charge point we've put it in so mm. our kit is basically for these guys to make it as easy as possible is there a coffee vending machine under it that we didn't find then is there, <laughs> there's like hot chocolate or something oh, i haven't like found it if there is put it that way yeah. but again you know when we think about those ac ones and those 22 kilowatt ones ourselves we've found the room quite limiting haven't we gordon that it's a struggle maybe to make a cable connection there where obviously that's got a ton of room in it so yeah, it's gonna be strong. I know our cable is a little bit smaller than maybe that we needed. Do you agree? Yeah, we've got that's just a six mil feed in. Yeah, because uh, we haven't. Uh, I think we might have to trade up to a sixty-three amp socket to do it. But yeah, that bags of wire and room in there, and and the uh, obviously the RCD built into it, which is what a lot of people like to see now as well. So I mean, that was pretty good. We have had a question in asking about compatibility with Octopus. I would say if you put one of them on a home, <laughs> compatible with Octopus, you're probably not that bothered about your electricity bill. Um, and you just park your Rolls Royce around the corner. <laughs> and you expect it's just gone in the garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're going to touch it later on, but you've, you've got an AC charger there, haven't you? I, I do, yes, Gordon, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you're absolutely right. With the, with the Octopus integration, this is across the AC range. I appreciate that's not our focus here today, but yeah, across the AC range of chargers, we can um, obviously integrate these with Octopus and have done since the beginning of March, I believe. Correct, yeah. So with the Octopus Agile and Go Tariff as well. So, and intelligent. Uh, and intelligent, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. All ready yeah, to go? Worries. And uh, yeah, we'll circle back to that because there's some grants news as well for the, yes. uh, for the domestic, you know, domestic grants back, actually, that we'll, we'll come back to a little bit later as well. And uh, obviously, we'll move on from, from our friend, our eight-legged our eight legged octopus friend, because we still haven't had our smart meter upgrade after we upset them last week. Wow, what are the chances that you could be involved in a changing of a meter, Gordon, and it not come off again? No, yeah. what's this bit? Three years, your previous one, wasn't it? Three years. I'm still not on Economy 7, even though I've got the meter. Right. So there's still an ongoing discussion so going just, on in the background. So you, I thought it automatically gave you the. I've got a dual rate meter back, but my account hasn't swapped over to dual rate yet. yet. So it's, it's been an ongoing, it's been a long <laughs> running like story. It, yeah. This. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But now, obviously, I've opened up a dual front as well because I said we wouldn't have a smart meter fitted here until my one at home was smart, but I was hoodwinked, wasn't I? So yeah. I sneaked in, did that, yeah. pestered me to get the one over there, and you upset them. Oh, let's not go there, I do. Yeah. And not talking about upsetting people, talking about people that I've had in my past. So we've got Ryan Bennett on tonight. So thank you very much, Ron. Ron was one of the very last students I actually got in a classroom that I was uh, formally teaching. So thank you very much for joining us tonight, Ron. I hope everything's all right for you and I hope things are mapped out really well for us. Mm -hmm. so, I hope yeah. you've recovered, Ryan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, his career's gone from strength to strength once I got out of the way. Yeah, yeah. I was holding him back for a long time. Okay, mm. that's good. So where are we going, Gordy? Well, Obviously, DC charge application. People have, all, I mean, I like the way the e-fix are. They dream big. They're already in there. Can you fit one of these in the average house? You might need to have a word with your DNO on that one. Mm. Where, where you're selling these charges? And point out, this is the 30 kilowatt unit as well. So this is the sort of say, entry level into DC. Yeah, absolutely. There's, there's one below this being the 20 kilowatt version. Again, looks identical, but obviously just a slightly lower power rating. We've got the 30 and then the 40 kilowatt as well uh, with the dual guns on either side. But in terms of applications, yeah, I think I touched on it earlier on. You've got the fleet side of the business, so commercial premises. Um, I would say kind of hospitality, hotels, golf clubs, those type of places where actually that time that you're utilising the charger needs to be maybe slightly condensed. So you're not on it six to eight hours. You may be only on it for one to two hours. So ideally high to footfall areas, but fleets and commercial space is the, is the ideal location. Right. And our fleets actually go on EV. You know, they do a bit of greenwashing on telly. They might have one van going down the street and the rest of them are all diesel out the back. 
No, I'd say that with the most of the companies that we speak to are slowly transitioning now over to EV, whether it be from staff, um, salary sacrifice, whether it be from a direct level, but we're finding that most of the utilization now is through fleets and commercial spaces. So this charge is ideal for that scenario. Right. Now, obviously, power levels with charging, yeah? so hotels. Now, I would book a hotel based on the fact that it has EV charging, and yeah. I have done in the past, especially if it's free. No, no you've, got to, you've got to work hard to find them these days. But, but you've got a sportage. I have at the minute, yeah. yeah. What does that run on? Batteries, yeah. That, that, got a battery would, start to the engine. Yeah, it starts the engine. <laughs> in the past, the radio, in the, yeah, in the yeah. days of Tesla, I would book a hotel. So you're still time. using the same principle of driving the sportage. I yeah. like it. So he'll yeah. only go if he can watch somebody else charge their battery vehicle. That's up. it. Nice touch yeah. on free. Yeah. <laughs> 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 But is it, you know, hotels, you know, they have the ambition, don't they? I think they'll fill the car park full of chargers, but there's probably a limiting factor in it. Yeah, there certainly is. I think from the DNO side of things, I think Ben touched on it earlier on, it's the education piece. A lot of the hotels think, well, if I'm going to go down the DC route, it needs to be 180 kilowatts or 240, 360. They automatically assume it's going to cost thousands of pounds and it's going to take up a larger footprint. But actually, if we did the education piece with them and said, look, here's your ROI, you could go in at 20, 30, 40 kilowatts. Maybe you look at post-mounted, wall-mounted, we can brand these units as well. So we can look at maybe an advertising revenue stream for these hospitalities. Um, so there's a lot of avenues that we could explore with this lower end of the DC market. So yeah, as soon as we've got the DNO approval, this is something we can definitely look at. All right, now, it's very easy with 30 kilowatts to swallow up that power supply. Yeah, mm, so indeed. obviously in, in AC charges, we're used to dynamic load management and things yeah. like that. Can you apply the same principle on the exactly DC the side? Same. Exactly right. the same principle. So our technology is um, it's actually hardware to software. So we have a dynamic load balancing device which connects to our software and mm. then back down to the charge point. Rather than it being DLB to charge point, we do it wirelessly so it's independent. So technically you could have the charges 100, 200 feet away and you could have your DLB within the building. It saves on the long cabling people are having to run with the older sort of technology. Okay, so you don't have to run, yeah, 100 metres back to a CT Correct. clamp at the tails, exactly. underneath the oak staircase, yeah. and uh, right around the back of the bar. The entire audience watching this are just lent into it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> back in again here, what's this? It sounds like just a cable. Yeah, mm. that's, that's, that's good. And again, it's, it's the, when you hear those big numbers for, for DC charging, yeah. there's a new transformer got to be installed and you know, massive grid cables and the rest of it. You sort of, you know, before you get the approval, you're sneaking around all those things, aren't you? Yeah, very much so. I think, as you said earlier on about the installation being so easy, shown in the video earlier, um, I think we will support the installers now with regards to the training piece for these, these DC um, charges. We'll go through the registration to make sure they've done all the training online. You know, we appreciate this is new to quite a few people, but as I said, from a, a, an initial kind of getting into DC, this is ideal. Yeah. Mm. And the other side of that as well is education piece for the installers on how to sell the merits of something like this to their clients. Because quite often if someone's looking for an EV charger to go to the installer and the installer leads what they should have. It's an education piece for them as well. So we're day in, day out teaching installers on how to actually sell this technology and the merits on it and how cost effective it is based on what the, the client is actually looking for. Yeah, and it stops blo blocking parking spaces, doesn't it? Like you said, for those installations mm. where you might just turn up for a couple of three hours, you're going to get more than enough to get your journey back. You know, nobody nobody drives for two and a half hours to get to a swimming pool, do they? I mean, you left your cap on, but the, um, <laughs> but they don't do they? Yeah, you know, they don't do that, do they? Yeah. No, and I think we, we said ho um, hotels earlier on, but I think as well we've got to make it clear that it, I think I still think there's a, an avenue here for 22 kilowatt AC alongside the DC side of things as well because there is an overnight stay as well. So. You know, not everybody needs to use DC. I think it's a nice thing to add to obviously encourage more people to the hotel for short stays and potentially work. But actually the overnight stays, I would still recommend going down the AC alongside a DC offering. I think that's something that you should So you get the overnight charge. Exactly that. So you get short dwell and long dwell. Yeah, yeah. And then you can, see, yeah, yeah, you can see that as parking spot soon, wouldn't you? Yeah, this spot is two hour only. Yeah. About, yeah, yeah it's an overnight parking space makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, if anyone's been to the NEC lately, you see it play out in the enormous EV charging hub they've put in there. Mm. There's, there's, on one side of the road, you've got a bank of ultra rapid chargers and a massive substation behind them. And then the other side of the road, there's a row of AC chargers yeah. and a Starbucks. <laughs> and obviously, it's a trade-off, isn't it? You either spend the money on a fast charging or you spend it on an expensive exactly coffee. That. Yeah, no, I drove a diesel van there, I just had a coffee, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. 
Yeah. Interesting. With Interesting. a caramel twist. Yeah, not anymore. Sugar free. Yeah. Yeah. Sugar free vanilla now, man. Nice. And then they shape overnight, so you have to work at it, and it's a lesson you can learn from me, my old man. Yeah, you're letting yourself go unnoticed. Yeah. Now, okay, we're talking about the, the, the smaller units there, mm. right? Okay, obviously, e fix, oh, we're all ambitious here. Someone said, I've got a fleet of uh, Spectres. <laughs> what's, the, what's the biggest charger you've got in the range? Oh, I think I'll let Ben take that one as well. Yeah, I mean, so we go from the 20 kilowatt all the way up to 240 kilowatt. Wow. Yeah. So right. ultra rapid. I think we've got a picture of one of them. Do you have got, what, what do you call this one? This is the This is the Goliath. Right. Yep. Okay. And that's uh, that's quite an attractive looking unit as well, isn't it? I mean that's a uh, yeah. Are you talking about Ben or the ones on the table? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, both. Both. Yeah. I like how both. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 They, they are. Yeah. So that's you call that dual guns, do you? Is that the that one? Yeah. Yeah, so you get let's just say this is two hundred and forty kilowatt or, or hundred kilowatt. More, right. Um more normal. So you can have two vehicles at once at fifty or 100 kilowatt delivered to one vehicle at once. Okay. Actually, Ben, I apologise. He was talking about yourself. Yeah. He said we call him dual guns, and then he <laughs> talked about the EV charges afterwards. So, yeah, just be careful there. So, that was okay. a sort of a compliment from Gordon. Yeah. Nice looking units, though, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And is that the same approach for wiring? It's just one cable in? Exactly that. Yeah. Right. It's exactly the same, yeah. Yeah. What be that six mil we put in now, Gordon? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's power the screen. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, not nice. I mean, yeah. that's. that's yeah. 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 And where and are people sort of where's where are those units heading to? That sort of. I mean, similar scenarios actually. You'd be surprised. Mm. Um, again, there's obviously a lot more work involved with regards to the site planning and obviously getting the DNO's approval. But yeah, very similar applications. You know, commercial spaces, maybe um, vans like good uh, heavy goods vehicles and light goods vehicles as well, because obviously that charging time needs to be reduced for operational purposes. Um, but obviously the, the the charger goes up in terms of kilowatts, and sometimes so does the the billing as well. So obviously you're going to be a bit cautious of that. Mm. Yeah, the billing. So you say, what in terms of how much people charge for? Correct. Bill cost, cost not charge for charge. Well, it is charge for charging, but yeah, yeah. that's uh, mm, well. I think we're going to come back to money actually, but uh, to take a little break actually, because that's a nice that's a nice segue into it. We've got some. Uh, here's a word that electricians forget. Hello and welcome to eFix Business Bootcamp. This week, we're exploring the key word that electricians forget and how it could boost your business. Over the past few years, we've checked out thousands of electricians' websites and what we've noticed is that a staggering 50% are missing a crucial keyword. A missed keyword that could be costing them valuable sales inquiries. Before we find out the mysterious missing word, let's explore why keywords are so important. Keywords are the words people type into search engines like Google when they're trying to find your website. For instance, if someone knows your company name, they might type it into Google to find your contact information. Go ahead, try it with your company name. What comes up first? Hopefully it's your website at the top. But what about those who don't know your name? How do they find you? That's where our missing keyword comes in. So what is the missing keyword? It's Electrician. Seems obvious, right? But believe it or not, many electricians forget to include this word on their websites. This simple slip-up could mean potential customers never find you. Google wants to help users find what they need, but it can only work with the information you give it. So why is the word electrician so crucial? In the UK, electrician is searched over 60,000 times every month. That's more than half a million searches a year. If your website doesn't prominently feature electrician, you're missing out on a lot of potential traffic. You might describe your business as an electrical contractor, which sounds professional, but isn't what people usually search for when they need an electrician. Electrical contractor gets searched about 3,600 600 times a month compared to 60,000 for an electrician. You can still sound professional and use essential keywords. For example, we are XYZ electrical contractors. Our team of electricians are experts in all types of electrical work. It's surprisingly easy to slip in the keyword. Now, let's see who our mystery spark is. Of course, it's none other than Marcus Barrett of Spark Safe Electrical. Now, Marcus has strategically used the keyword six times on his homepage. Now, just because electrician gets searched a lot doesn't mean half a million people are ready to play some business. It's a competitive field with lots of electricians trying to reach the top spots on Google. That's where our next tactic comes in. Ever notice how Google suggests words when you start typing? Try typing electrician and Google might suggest electrician near me. This phrase gets searched over 90,000 times a month. But if everyone used it on their homepage, it'd look weird and thousands of sparks would be competing for the top spot again. So. We need to think about other terms people might search for. When you type electrician into Google, Google knows your location and suggests specific locations like electrician in Skipton or electrician in Harrogate. These keywords are a lot easier to rank for as there's much less competition. When looking back to Marcus's website, we can see that he has deployed this tactic successfully. So he is very likely to be near the top of Google search results when someone searches for electrician in Wellingborough. 
Appearing at the top of the search results associated with a specific town or village is much easier than a non-geographic term. That's it for this week's eFix Business Bootcamp. Tune in next time and we'll explore how to leverage the power of geography in your website. Always great to have your mates involved there. And again, a couple of things, I don't know, hopefully Marcus will say in there if I've got this incorrect. I think he came along and saw one of your early speeches when we had the eFix actually physical shows out there speaking to electricians. You did it as part of a masterclass, which obviously Joe's improved on it there. But also he, he did a little bit of marketing when he first started his business up to invest in making as few mistakes as he possibly can. And we think he didn't make any mistakes here at all, did he? No, that's it. Is he, is he getting all his work from Wellingborough? Yes, he is. <laughs> he is. I think he ranked really high. I'll put it in the comments. He ranked really high. Yeah, and he's got a really good, and he's followed a lot of the other ones. They're not my customer from uh, Richard Few, was it? Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. If he walks in, he gets a Gary or Whiff that they're not his customer. He yeah. just cuts it short and he's out of there. He sees the, the spectre parked outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're usually the worst payers, if you ask. <laughs> if they've got any money, they don't want to part with it. So, uh, yeah. But what a brilliant boot camp. Again, we say it every time and we say it because we believe it. Another great piece of work from Joe Jr. there in order to put that together for us and, and great graphics as well. The more work the team do, Gary, the less we have to do. Yeah, I do notice yeah. that. I like that. Yeah, yeah. we like that. Yeah. It's the only thing I'm good at, not doing a lot of work. That's the one thing I've mastered at eFix. Now, we touched on it before the break. We got into money. Yeah, now we used to say people are making money from the EV charges now. That's a, that's a part of the sale. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's part of the grants. It's part of the, the legislation as well now. As well. So, yeah, it's a big part of DC charging, especially as, you know, these charges are being installed in places where it is public um, and part of that is that return on investment mm. and a big part of that now is obviously having the access easy access to contactless payments and being able to recoup some of that cost mm. now i've done the maths on this actually because we had a, we had a quote from our favorite energy supply with an eight-legged <laughs> mascot earlier in the week no and meters. i think uh, and i think we're looking about actually i think we're looking about 21 pence a kilowatt hours renewal rate which i thought was all right actually good, interested in on the comments what, what people good. got uh, i was down at Mastabs early in the week doing the lighting install he was getting pestered by energy pies they were offering in 19 so i'm going to hold out a bit he might use a bit more gas and stuff like that and, uh, he might on a dual fuel deal but anyway but even at that yeah now People get a shock, obviously you charge your EV at home and the cheapest, you know, you might be on economy seven if you've waited three years to get your smart meter uh, replaced. It can be cheap as soon as you step out and charge on the road on fast chargers, it's a big leap up in cost, isn't it? I mean, it's, it is, yeah. it's, it's then in town, it's uh, 79 pence opposite the fish and chip shop. Mm, right. Yep. Okay. So bloody the mess. I think we could be on to something here. We've got our friend with a tyre depot next door. He brings in a lot of customers. They're going to go electric. They're going to want the top up, aren't they? So I think, you know, I sort of worked this out, I reckon for a 50 kilowatt hour charge, yep. based on buying at 21 pence, beating the charger in town at 79, I think there could be 30 pound profit per 50 kilowatt charge. Okay. Yep. I mean, did you base it on how many charges you're gonna get? Now? Well, that's, that's a one. And then if you could do even a hundred a year, yeah, which is only two a week. Yeah, that's doable. There you go, you got 3,000 pounds worth of essentially profit or, or payback on, on the charge you've installed. So it's always about return on investment, isn't it? Okay, mm -hmm. so if we get that for free, we're on Clover. Because <laughs> we can whack it in ourselves. Yeah. Then, so they leave it, we'll send back the box and the pallet. Yeah. Okay, cardboard box, it got lost in transit. You know yeah. what it's like when it gets picked up? goes missing, exactly. easy to pick up and just somebody put in the back of their mm -hmm. car on the way home. Mm. We're on it. So yeah. that's a winner, isn't it? Yeah. They won't mind, well, they're live on the telly. Mm. Can't ask him, he lost at the race wall. Any chance of it, Andrew? Thank uh, you very much. Yeah, yes, thank you. Yes, there. Any pauses? Yes, that's that's good, isn't it? Three grand would be worth picking up, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But they run at about fourteen hundred quid, same as an inverter at about the same size. Is that what they are? Fifteen hundred. I think I'll let Ben answer that one. There's a starting range for sure. Yeah, there's a starting price between four and a half and five thousand. Oh, right. Okay, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Get your money back in a flash. And again, yeah. that's basing it on one charger. And again, we go back to that example we gave around commercial spaces, public spaces, hospitality, it's unlikely they're only going to install one. So using that business model that you just said then with their ROI, you times that by five, mm. six charges, you know, all of a sudden it becomes a very cost-effective solution. Yeah, and an increase in football because people are more likely to, to, yep. to visit based on the fact there's charging there. And if you yeah. serve food, another mm. winner in it, or you've exactly. got some sort of cafe, yeah. some mm. very expensive coffee at the same time. Mm. Yeah. yeah, and Jenny's waving at me in the background going, because we forgot to announce a winner for the challenge wall. Did we get a winner? <laughs> right. So, as it's oh, a they bond... didn't ring, did they not? Is it... Oh, well. It didn't ring. So, as it was a Bond film, 
So we've got Money Jenny. Ah, oh, hello, Money Jenny. Okay, yeah. he is here. So he is here over there. Look at him, the new James Bond. We will come back to it. Not Paul. Paul. Paul got turned down. Okay, we've got Money Jenny. So no one rang. No one yeah. wants the prize. The bearded spark. We thought he would have rang in. So uh, you're playing into the Bond theme this evening, are you? Some glamorous uh, no, young Bond? No. Well, no. But the Bond's over there. You've got a soft spot for a, for a uh, young Rick over there, haven't you? But in every good Bond film, <laughs> every good Bond film, there is a bad guy, and we've got our own over here. It's Odd Sod. <laughs> it so there we go over it. Let's have a look at him. Oh, I expect you to die, Mr. Bond. Yes, Odd Sod from now on. Yeah, is it uh, Odd Sod or Odd Job? I can't. Odd Job. Sod. We'll go with Odd Sod. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, the, the Bond villain. We'll come back to Bond though. Yeah. Okay. So no one rang. Yeah. How disappointed they've dove in, done the time, and and absconded with nothing. All right. We'll we'll keep that. Oh. It was going to be one of them. Uh, no, when it's gone, it's, it's gone. gone. No, it's, it's, gone, it's, it's gone. gone. No, 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 it's gone. Yeah. So, so that's that's potentially quite fast payback. Yeah, but the government's yeah. thrown a few incentives out there as well. So there's, there's two grants still available at the minute. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. Did you want to touch on what those were? Um, yeah. So you have got the commercial workplace grant, which is um, targeted at businesses with staff, so they can get up to seventy five percent off the cost of installation, Ooh. up to forty sockets per site. So if we got that for free and we installed it ourselves and made an invoice up, yep. we won again. Yeah. Yep. Um, there's now, so the workplace grant was meant to end this year, but they've extended it until March next year, end of March next year, okay. 2025. And the reason for that is because they've segmented the education grant. So schools are able to access grant funding up to £2,500 per socket, up to 40 sockets for charges. But there is criteria in this that they can't have taken more than £315,000 in funding over the last three financial years. So you can imagine in this economic climate, they would have taken a lot more than that. But there are some schools out there that are able to benefit from it. Mm. Mm. So if I was an electrician, yep, I'd be down the PTA meeting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you normally just go in and enter the tombola. Yeah, and possibly, you know. Put yourself on the board. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd be uh, <laughs> muscling my way into the PTA yeah. and uh, trying to suggest they put an EV charger in. Yeah. And obviously doing it for a, a discount. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. but like you outlined, it's, a, it's another stream of revenue, mm. which is what the grant's aimed at. Is to enable schools, yes. But you think how many schools have AstroTurf sports halls that people are using, but they now have EV charging. It's another stream of revenue for them ah. and they get grant funding for it. Mm. And that, that'd be handy for a school, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah. definitely. Yeah. My kids go got a sports hall that's open for the gymnasium and all the rest of it. There's no EV chargers there. Is Finn not working in there? He is now working. The, my old boy's working. Love yeah. it, yeah, yeah. At the gym at the school. He is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's not very adventurous for where he can <laughs> find a job. He'd have to be at the school or he were never going to find one. So, uh, yeah, bless him. Yeah. He loves it. Yeah, well, I'd, if I was Marcus, I'd be, I'd be tapping him up. Yeah, see, I'm coming in. I'm going to join the PTA. Well, Marcus is uh, down at the squash club and all the rest of it. I is bet he? they ain't got any EV charges. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't strike me as a squash player. He's incredibly um, competitive. Right. So he's managed to go through three three or four squash leagues. So he started in Division 5. I think he's up to two, and they want him to play in the team. I know, and he is the same size as when he left him. Yeah. yeah he is incredibly competitive. Right. He currently got his first 180, I think, at darts this week, as in when he was thrown competitively. Right. He hasn't lost this year. He's trying to do an Arsenal, be the invincible season. So he ain't lost all season. Right. Is that because you haven't been got a support? No, they, they, they miss me down there at the darts. I'm, I'm quite humorous, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah when I'm down there, I'll, I'll pull a few legs. But we're drifting away from the real, yeah. real meat and two veg. But Workplace, £350 a socket, so that's good. Is that the same for DC or AC? Yeah, as long as it's OZEV approved, which yeah. is the governing body, which mm. all of our units are, then yeah. Anyone can claim the grant. Mm. That's nice. That's yeah, a... if you're going to get a bit of revenue, your money's back in your pocket before you know it, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah definitely. Well, they are ending, which is a key, a key point. So if people are going to do it, then it's act now. All right. So they've got a year, virtually. You said next March? Yeah, same. So workplace and the education grant, they both end in March next year. Right, mm. okay. Mm. Yeah, more new government, new thinking, so you never know, do you? Yeah, so I think, I mean, that's, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good market to be in. We don't see, I mean, we obviously follow a lot of people on social media, we don't see many DC charger installs yet, so I think there's, a, there's probably, a, yeah, it's the right time to get in, actually, exactly. now, I would say. Dean Haywood in the comments is trying to put everyone off at the minute. No, no, there's no money in it, there's no money in it. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. Chatting uh, from the back of his, yeah. uh, of his, uh, of his spectre yeah. being driven around yeah. watching he, the fixed TV. He's not yeah, he's not driving it, he's got champagne in the back of the TV. Yeah, but, uh, yeah again, it's that, yeah, get there early, get there and earn the money, isn't it? Mm. There's nothing difficult about it, is it? It's just the cable. 
Yeah, no, they're it. overthinking it, aren't they? And that, yeah. that mounted, you know, just to make it nice easy, we're not on a concrete block, we're not yeah. on a massive stand. We screwed that to effectively an OSB wall. Mm. Yep. Yeah, it fell down twice, but again, we got it back up there. <laughs> yeah, so it's fine. Yeah, just, just hangs there, doesn't it? Mm. So now, there's obviously another grant announced this week as well. You can get residential grants are back for houses without parking. Yeah. Which is uh, basically you get some money to put a channel across the pavement if the council will agree to it. Yep. Exactly that. And we've seen a few products like the Curbo Charge, I think they call it. And That's a, it, yep. There's a few uh, variants of it out there. Um, and so you also, obviously, we've talked a lot about DC chargers. You, you also still do AC chargers as well. Yeah, absolutely that. And I say our, our AC range of chargers, especially for the domestic side, would be ideal for that for that grant to, to be utilised, really. But yeah, up to £350 towards the charger and the infrastructure installation, such as Curbo Charge that you just said there. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Mm. Now I don't know. I've seen people. I've seen the Curbo Charger. I haven't seen many. I haven't seen many out in the wild yet. So it'd be good to see how much the council charges to do that process or someone. I think I think one of them. I think Curbo Charge come and do it for you. So. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I think they're doing several trials across various councils as we speak. Um, so I think at the moment it's something that's quite new, um, but I think we'll start to see it more and more, the more adoption now with the grant now in place. It's something that I think a lot of people will need and utilise very quickly. Mm. It's a, there's certainly about this one. You can try that yourself. Yeah, you uh, could be the yeah. first. Yo, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm happy to, you know, like I said, if we look into it, I'm very happy to, to put it in. So we're, we're juggling between, hopefully my daughter's not watching this. She'll probably be the one... Yeah, she'll probably, she's only, what's she now, 16. She starts learning to drive in October. Out of all of us, she's likely to be the one to get the first battery power car. Okay. Because she's got to have an automatic anyhow. Yeah. So a battery car is effectively automatic anyhow yep. because she only got one hand, so she can't change gears. I know she can have it moved on the gear shift, and thanks to Nick Ramo, he's put me in contact with somebody up here that does all those adaptions. But right. my thinking is just go for something. She'll go auto or battery. So, yeah, that's mm -hmm. something we can definitely look at. Yeah. Probably going to need Jenny to do all the thing called paperwork for me, and I just for the turn council. Up, yeah, yeah. Well, well, any of it, all of it, and I just turn up a bit at home on the day it arrives <laughs> and installed. That sounds perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Normally when you hear the word and council. Then, yeah, and then <laughs> once I hear wired, Marcus will get a phone call. So yeah, so it's good. But no, I'm, I'll, I'll happily try that one. Mm. Yeah, so as long as you haven't got to prove you've got a battery power car with the VIN number or whatever they want off you, because that's the, that will hold me back. Because oh, you want to get in early, do you? Well, no, I'll have it done tomorrow if we could. Oh, right. so it's, yeah. Um, yeah. It's just mm. if I have to, then it's forcing me. Vienna's not quite 17 yet. I'm putting a bit of pressure on her then. Oh, if that sits out the front. I suppose Shell could drive it. Yeah. God, imagine the arguments after that. It's my car, Mum, not yours. Oh, it'd be a disaster, mm. wouldn't it? But so yeah. that's £350, so it'll be, yeah. Yeah, toward, towards the charger yeah, in the to 75 per cent, so I bet there's yeah. not many coming under £350. No, yeah. no, not at all. Mm. But it'd be interesting. I mean, this is just a curious point. If anyone has uh, got, yeah, um, a charger installed on the, uh, when you haven't got a drive, how do you sort the parking out in the street? Because I know your neighbour... He's moving. Is he? Hopefully. All oh, right. OK, you've, you've driven him out, have you? Hopefully. <laughs> and like I said, and I'm, again, hopefully he's watching it. it better, better the devil you, you know than you don't. Next one could be worse. Yeah. You know, we we'd look, might look back and think he was the most laid-back person in the world. Yeah. yeah. Might, might do. Right. Doubt it. Has he sold his house? Uh, he, yeah, went on. Didn't put a board up. So it didn't yeah. have me, I, I happened to be looking instantly for some reason and saw, yeah, for sale. Then two weeks later, he'd gone. Right. Sold pretty quick. Definitely sold. He hasn't that hasn't completed. So right. a sale's not until you complete. But yeah. yes, he's right. he's he's sold. I'm just wondering how he got to the bit where have you had any disagreements with your neighbours on the survey <laughs> form came up <laughs> and how he got on with that? Yeah, yeah. He must have lied. Yeah, he, he would have had to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but Moving if on. he was still living there, he'd probably park outside the front of your house just to stop you charging. Yeah, but that's that's mm. a reflection of him, not me. That's what I always say to the kids. When people do things like that, that's a reflection of them. So mm. it's, it's not, not to do with you, it's them being a complete wally. Mm. So yeah. you just gotta let them do it and you just, just move on. Mm. Let's just get on with it. Yeah. It's like my van's always a contentious point in my cul-de-sac, but I just, that's other people's. Is it? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Well, just, just, we'll have that off. Tradesman. <laughs> well, just, I don't want anyone to get Tradesman on. Tradesman on the estate. Yeah, I've, I've, had, I've had a bloke who slept on his settee so he could come out and slobber all over me one morning. I mean, Shell nearly had a, yeah, I was, Mm. I was old Gary was around at that moment in time. I was, yeah, I was right. not impressed at all. Yeah, you get up and start slobbering and point, and people point at me. Let's move on, because he just- People point at you? Well, he, he, like that, I right. like, I'll break it off, yeah. Right. <laughs> if you want to keep that finger, you're going to need to put it away. Yeah, so uh, yeah, move on. Yeah, well, I can say, we and obviously, the other favorite topic we haven't touched on tonight is your plant room with, uh, with uh, 
basin and toilet in there. Yes. And, and solar storage. Now we have seen a trend. There was a, a charger manufacturer at CES this year has launched a DC charger for the home, which allows you to charge up, I think, believe up to 20 kilowatts using a combination of solar, battery, and a grid. Right, okay. Yep. Wow, you got that ain't that's going to be a, a well, start with these 20 kilowatts of battery, it's a substantial house to start with. Then you've got to have enough energy to want to sacrifice it into your car, aren't you? Yeah, so surely this brings in vehicle to grid to us, doesn't it? You know, this, you know, if we're going to do that and have all them batteries set up and start pushing it into there, the house doesn't benefit, does it? You know, because you've pushed it all into the car, you've got 80 kilowatt battery in there, yeah. So, um is but that is that where we're going? I think I think that is where I think you know we're talking about DC now, thinking of it for commercial, but I think we'll end up seeing it more and more in the home for certain applications because obviously the cheapest battery storage at the minute yeah. is to buy a second-hand Nissan Leaf and put it on your drive. What does it come with? Free anything? Well, can't you get a free shed, don't you? Yeah. Somewhere for the Amazon <laughs> driver to put the parcels. Yeah, free 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 wheels, yeah. seats, and a steering wheel. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's all there. So that's the you know because even car battery people going about the life of car batteries even. After, if you've been running it around for 10 years, they still have a useful life. Mm. And uh, that could be a... Any yeah. technology breakthroughs for you there that you can talk about? There is a seven kilowatt single phase DC unit for domestic properties in the pipeline, possibly this year, early next year, um, as well as vehicles, grid vehicles, everything. But it's about when the right time for that technology is to come out. You know, vehicles grid is already around now in trials, but it's, it's not quite there yet, but it is in the pipeline, mm. so yeah. It's just difficult, isn't it? Because yeah, by the time you get to one thing, the next thing's already arrived. Mm. Isn't it? And the yeah. regulation struggle with things like that, don't they? They're, they're always slightly lagging, aren't they? Yeah. I'd imagine when we get the the next iteration of it, that we'll have another change, won't we? There'll be something else, but by then it'll be almost ready to change again. Yeah, future proofing. Yeah, always the thing. Yeah, and well, that's uh, that's definitely where we're where we're going. But I think it's uh, it's interesting. We don't we haven't seen much DC. It'd be interesting to see how it falls out this year. We're going to follow that journey. See how you uh, how Please you get do. on. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, best thing, best catch up, of course. Yeah, we get on comments corner, Gary. Let's go over to comments corner. You've been busy over there. A lot of technical stuff. Glad we got a technical man in. So <laughs> the Hydra guys have been working the socks off. Uh, <laughs> you guys might be moaning about the long drive back, but they've got loads of things that we get to get back to people about. Um, we've had a poll running this mo this afternoon, this evening, about who's going to Elex, and at the moment it's running like uh, fourteen point six four people. We're going to. <laughs> <laughs> to Elex at Bolton tomorrow. Um, talking about the Nissan Leaf, uh, I think Intru Service would uh, disagree uh, with Dave Gordon and point you towards the Renault Kangoo. <laughs> He's had that on uh, test drive and strongly recommends it. <laughs> so you might want to take that one up with him. And um, something else that we have to question Joe Hammond about is what goes on in a Premier Inn as he <laughs> wants to get booked in there and throw his keys into the to the centre of the ashtray, so yeah, maybe ask some questions off air about that one. Yeah, well, Joe Hammond's got a training course coming up, so perhaps it is in the Leamington Spa area, <laughs> and he can find out. And, uh, and Griff Thomas has said, Gary, say hello to your new neighbour. He's bought the house next door to you. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, don't, 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 wait, don't wish for something you don't know. Yeah, I'll bet the devil you know. That'd be nice, I'd like Griff next door. Yeah, it's good. Mm. Yeah, I can imagine that'd be technical. Shouting at me across the, uh, across the fence, that'd be nothing new. Yeah, arguing technical matters. Oh, can you imagine it? Yeah. Oh, you'd never get a moment, would you? <laughs> he wouldn't. He wouldn't slum his way down to my way. So, mm. yeah, it's good. Are we? Uh, are we into the to the bond section yet? Because we've been teased it earlier on. And well, so we have obviously. First, obviously, Rick has turned up, but he's just filling in now. I mean, before he leaves, no, filling in his face because now all of a sudden <laughs> he's worked. Out he can buy a takeaway on the way home or body swerving here and eat it. So that's what yeah. he's doing. So, well, he won't yeah. be here much longer, will he, Gary? Because he's, he's not going to. Yeah. He's not going to be here much longer. You really want to tell everyone? Well, let's let's watch what's happened this week. Reports flooding in suggest that Richard Gaunt, known for his work with eFix and the popular Rick's Tool Time series, is set to take on the iconic role of James Bond. Yes, you heard that right. The man famous for coming close to last on the Electrician's Challenge could soon be 007. Gaunt, a 54-year-old video presenter, seemed to confirm the news with his trademark charm, stating, I'm charmed, but not surprised. It was only a matter of time after my Bond-style video went viral. With his unique blend of rugged charisma and hands-on know-how, Gaunt promises to bring a fresh perspective to the legendary character of James Bond. But can he handle the pressure of saving the world between takes? The name's Bond. Equipotential Bond. 
completely inevitable, I would suggest. Yeah. The minute we met him, we knew that he was probably you know, destined for that role. And we did that one little video, went viral, and we knew at that moment in time that we'd lost him to be the next Bond. Yeah, it's only a matter of time. And uh, yeah, so on, on that bombshell, really, as, as Rick heads off to the, 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 the stardom and the red carpet of the future, we best just see what is his tool time this week's event. Last one. Mm. It's tool time. We recently introduced the Cliff Quick Test on social media and the response was unexpectedly enthusiastic. All the members of the electrical community shared stories of long-held devices, some even handed down to their generations. On the flip side, young electricians seem puzzled by the appeal of this electricery. For seasoned electricians, it's a nostalgic journey, while for newcomers like me, it presents an opportunity to delve into a product that could enhance the electrical testing setup. Before we get into the details of the quick test, perhaps it's best to explore why it even exists. A long, long time ago, before the introduction of the Plug and Socket Safety Regulations 1994, electrical appliances for residential use did not have to be supplied with a 13 amp plug fitted. So if you'd bought a TV, fridge or even a table lamp, you'd be supplied with a stripped cable end for you to attach the plug to. Consequently, the task of fitting a plug remained a component of the O-Levels and the GCSE Physics curriculum. Though most students didn't pay attention, this led to millions of poorly wired plugs with incorrect fuse sizes being attached to appliances throughout the country. Furthermore, it served as an initial exposure to electrical do-it-yourself projects, motivating numerous homeowners to tackle more complex electrical tasks. Why not simply attach a plug to appliances, you may be asking? Well, although the 13 amp plug became standard in many UK homes during the 1940s, you could still encounter 15 amp, 5 amp or even 2 amp plugs. Manufacturers were actually helping homeowners by providing appliances without plugs to prevent mismatch connections. The challenge now lies with appliance manufacturers. How can they effectively test appliances using just a flexible cable? Enter the quick test, the original screwless connector. Quick test does what it says on the tin, or should I say on the hinged front. Simply insert the stripped wire ends into the colour coded clips and close the lid to power up. We use the quick test to power up a variety of fixed electrical equipment such as lights or motors. The lid includes a switch in both the neutral and line conductors as well as a UK style 13 amp fuse in the line conductor. Most variants come with a neon indicating showing power supply to the quick test is active. Various versions are available with or without the lead fitted. We usually fit our own lead as we often combine the quick test with other test equipment. It's a simple job to wire a quick test by removing the back cover. The quick test is designed to handle a maximum current of 13 amps for 15 minutes and 5 amps for continued use. It is also compatible with a 24 volt DC power supply with a 5 amp current draw. Good news for the viewers in the USA and Canada. Cliff has created a version featuring black and white colour coding so you can also join in in the fun with your strange wire colours. You might find it useful to fix the quick test down to the bench using the two screw holes. For wall mounting make sure you have the lid hinged down so you don't accidentally power up the unit and electrocute yourself or even a colleague. The quick test proves to be an invaluable tool on the eFix test bench. During our review we stumbled upon Cliff's three phase version designed for more daring tests and maintenance setups a purchase we couldn't resist. In the description you'll find a link to all available versions from reputable electronic suppliers like Farnell, CPC and RS Components. While not the most budget friendly tool, it's worth noting that these tools are often passed down generations generating a sense of heritage. Consider it more of an investment or a potential future antique. When it comes to antiques, I'm not referring to Gary's toolbox. You might have an item resembling the quick test like a Rendar safe block with metal clips or another piano inspired design known as the Key Nectar. If you're serious about electrical work, we believe that the quick test is essential. It's far superior to having a few Wagos loosely attached to the end of a flex. So let me know what you think. Get your votes in, but till then, I'll see you on the flip side. Dada. Do you reckon he used Tadao when he's blown someone away, Odd Sod? <laughs>
Do you reckon that'll be a really takes you out? Ta-da. Ta-da. Yeah, I think it's gone. Yeah. Another fantastic Rick's Tall Time, I would suggest there. That's something from back in the day. Is it? It's a super old piece of kit. Not many people would have them kicking around. You brought your one in from home, obviously, Gordon. Yeah, you've had it since new, so well before the 40s, I think, when them plug tops were about. Essential bit of kit for me. Yeah, I mean, you use them on everything. It was in quite interesting. Obviously, I love the comments we get on the videos. We put that out on social media. That, that sparked an interest in the, in the, in the product. And there was someone saying that they can remember the dad basically didn't put plugs on the power tools. He just used to carry a quick test around right. so nobody else on site could use his tools because they didn't have plugs on. Okay, good. So, no. Crack an idea. Crack an idea, that, yeah, yeah. yeah. So perhaps we'll circle back to that idea yeah. as we get towards the new month. Um, but well, yeah, but I think, well, we'll see. What's the audience think? We'll see what they're coming in. Do people think it's a great or a gimmick? You know, some have people suggesting you can just get away with a, a few wagos on the end of a flexible cable. Yeah, I know. And there'll be somebody that the basic insulation was shown, which certainly was on the wagos as well. There's always a, there's a story behind every story, but I think it's more of a control conditions thing, isn't it? You know, it's that sort of, you know, I know I'm going to energise at this stage. There's a deliberate action to energise it. There's clearly mm. a neon indicator as well. I, I think, think you fessed up, you found some at a college once, didn't you? I might have found a lot of them at a college one. So I turned up at a college and I had a policy when I first got there because a lot of things were really, really old. Mm. You weren't there though, Gordon, but yeah, so <laughs> they were really old. And what I did was when I opened up a box and I had no idea what it was used for, if I threw it away, I'd never have to know what it was for. So okay. I went in there and I rem clearly remember seeing them. And I was like, oh, I don't know what these are for. And I threw them all away. And I, even I, when I found out what they were, I was semi-heartbroken because I was like... <laughs> I had to then made two rigs that took me quite a long time to replace them. So we had a meter and a cutout and tails, and we physically put them in props. So a better job, but my life could have been a lot easier. Yeah. I would have had loads of them. And if I knew how much they were worth, I'd have kept them actually threw them in the back of my car. I think. So, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could have been knocking them out yeah. for a few And I say, we found the three fairs version during the making of the video, so we obviously had to buy one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll play around Delve with into that. that. So, and most of the audience seem to think it's great, but what does it care what they think? Yeah. Well, because we've got to summon down the tool from above. So we're going to take the second uh, slowest person to do the electrician's challenge today. We could mm -hmm. say the slowest, but we'll say second slowest because we're above that, aren't we? I think so. Yeah, so we're above that. So Ben's gonna, and again, when he first came in, he said, said desperately want to sit here because I know exactly what it means when the tool from above, yep. and I've got the voice for it, Gary. So we're gonna put down, I'm gonna save your knees as well. We're gonna put down as if we're maybe having a little time on Sunday, a little moment to ourselves. So I'd imagine you're praying in your own mind now that you hadn't come. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we're gonna do this. So we're gonna jump up. So jump up for me, Ben. Okay, imagine you're not one of the directors in the business, imagine you're just uh, one of the... Oh, uh, no, there's no job too small. No, yeah, well, no. <laughs> and we're going to come down, young man, so I can put my arm around you. So, you know, mind my big guns, I don't want you to get embarrassed there, son. <laughs> yeah. You've got your tiny little back as well, haven't you? you could do oh, the ridicule tonight yeah, is yeah, great. Just, just great. So we're going to put our hands up, and what's the call cool signing? And we practiced it earlier at Mastav, so come on, tell me what it is. Two. Yeah. <laughs> Enthusiasm, yeah. Mm, yeah. If I got paid mm. for enthusiasm tonight, yeah, I wouldn't be eating for a week. So we've got to really <laughs> lean into this. I want you to get right down in there. So, so when you're thinking of the word tall, mm. okay, just think about yourself and just think about tall. And does that ring true? <laughs> now at this time you're going tall, tall. Okay, yep. is that you got the feeling for it? Are well, you feeling, feeling tall? Yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're going in tall. Ready? Yep. Together. <clears throat> Hands up. <laughs> no, no, we said none of them. No. <laughs> and two. I'll try. I'll do it with you this time. Yeah, I reckon please. it'll move this time a yeah. little bit if I do it with you. Okay, okay. he's moved his hand. Yep. Right, ready? <laughs> ready? Yep. Two. That's how you do it. Try, to try solo because we're not getting up yet. Come on, and again. Solo. Wait for you to do it with now. Wait for you to do it with me. Ready? Yep. <laughs> hey. Got none left. We can we can we can cut this out and actually put it out on YouTube as an individual segment. No, so it just goes. We can we can do that. We can do that. For, I can see where it's going. You need to work out a bit more, yep. mate. You've got the potential, I think, for a decent frame, but it's hidden inside such a slender physique. Put your cushions back, then. Okay, and we're going. So. It's been a highlight tonight. How far is your trip home? Is it five hours of contemplation on the way home? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. There'll be a few life choices and things like that I would suggest on the way. Lots but would you want to get them out of the bag? There you go. You've got that. That's the oh, product got the itself. Dear. Don't, don't let them drop got, that one. Get the, no, I've got the three phase version. Do you know what it's for? No. No, okay, okay. So, the, the what is it called? Tool wall. Good, the tool mm. wall. Okay, so the best tool is up there. Yeah. Okay, and the worst tool would be behind the winner of the electrician's challenge today, Andrew. Yep. Yeah, yes. just behind him. 
anywhere in the middle is about a seven or an eight, and 11's in the top right-hand corner. But if you don't know what it is, mm -hmm. you get to place it. What's our audience said? They think it's great. Okay, but, that's a bit, but you don't know what it is. It's entirely your choice. They think it's great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Probably not just said to you. <laughs> and like, if it was outstanding, it would be a top, top right-hand corner. Yeah, yeah like, okay. like uh, Ronaldo, top right, bins. Was it just magnificent? That's about, oh, that's about nine and a half, ten. That's that good, is that's that. good. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I like that. Oh, solid, I'd agree solid, with that. Yeah, solid piece of kit. Well, they really did when they Rick suggested that was expensive. Uh, really silly money. That's about eighty quid. Oh right, okay, it's not too bad. Yeah. Is the bag of shame going back up? Yeah, <laughs> bag of shame. <laughs> the tongue from above can go back up. Yes. Send it you. Summon it up. <laughs> See, you got your highlight there. Yeah. You got your moment, didn't you? Okay. Mm. You can't wait to get back in the office. Eh? You'll be there at about six o'clock tomorrow. I'm pretty you? excited about it. Yeah, post it all up and everything. <laughs> Fastest electrician in this room. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. That I'm going to add that to all of my bios now, aren't <laughs> yeah. I? That time. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You put it on your LinkedIn profile. I will. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Updated on the way home. You get a top trump and a link to the website. That's always there. You yeah. can watch it back. Yeah, straight uh, direct to your race wall and the top trumps card with your curry. So this is your saving moment. No, come on, Ben. Let's see. You can have your moment here because you are a powerful eater of Indian cuisines and we know we get the chilies based on that. What do you normally have, your man? Oh, the naga chicken. And would you say that's the full heat? Is yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, but taste the heat. So, taste the heat? Yeah, okay, yeah. so um, Ben, what, what did you have today? I opted for a korma. What's that like for strength? Um, I one chilli, maybe. Oh, is it quite best. mild? Is it? it is a mild curry, but it's still a good curry. It's a tasty, reliable one. Yeah, there we go. I'll shut up for a minute or two, I think. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, we've had a great time tonight. Actually, we've, we've learned a lot about DC yeah. charging uh, in terms of we've, we've had the unit here, had it had a bit. Looks like a great unit. I'm sure the audience appreciate that as well. Get some learning in there. There is a link to Hydra EV in the description, but I'm sure it's a name you'll be hearing a lot of as you go around. And obviously yes. we'll try That's and spot the, the chargers now. We'll, yeah. We're all like a bit of charger spotting. Um, and hopefully we turn up in some very nice places. I'll be lucky to place... Oh, I'll stay there. There's an EV charge. And if we turn up, hopefully it'll be... I hope so. One. Hope yeah. so. And hopefully we can tap into your network and maybe get out and see one being installed as well. That would be good for us. When we've been trying for a while to get out to see some DC going in. Yeah. Gary likes to go to sports clubs. Yeah. I'll do the hotels. <laughs> I mean, can't say fairer than that, can we? I don't look like I've been anywhere near a sports club for about <laughs> <laughs> you were just, years. You were extolling your athletic prowess earlier on, Gary. Gym. I don't count the gym as being sports. Yeah. No, no, it's just, you know, you just go there because it's an essential thing. You two want to join in. Yeah. If you want to, you know, you can't, you know, obviously people thought we were twins when he came. Obviously, yeah, <laughs> then... Ben's twin brothers turned up. Yeah, mm. it's all good. But we're back again in a couple of weeks. We've still got the register. And the way you got on the register today was by leaving a comment. And according to Comments Corner, which we're going to go back to now, would you say there's been a plethora of comments over there, young Mr. Elcott? There's been lots of talk and we've uh, just had a discussion that the coma does not classify itself as a curry. Oh, I've dropped myself in it again, have I? Uh, the good news is we're not cutting anybody in half. We're up to 16 full people going to uh, Bolton tomorrow. So that's good news. Well, there will be four more. Sure, really? Because we're going over as well, aren't we? First time I think we've got mob handed for a while to yeah. an event as well, isn't it? Yeah, it's just because we've got to see some people. There we go. Oh, I didn't get that. I thought we were going to see some fun. No. <laughs> no we've not got any fun. Over. No, no, no. All no of us fun. got to see these people who just mean you. Uh, yeah, well, we'll see. So if anyone is there tomorrow, say hello. We'll hopefully see, see you there. We'll, we'll be there. It looks like there's no little 10, so we might be there for opening the doors at 10. Yeah. yeah. Drifting in. And again, so we've got the AI register. So how did you get in the AI register today? You've left a comment, but of course it's one week out of sync. And by being out of sync, you had to be on last week's to hear your name getting called out from AI Joe. So let's go over and see who was joining us last week. Now then everyone, thanks for joining us. I hope you are having a wonderful week. Welcome to the register. Let's get started. Who's up first? Who else but the man himself, Sean Dempsey, straight from Costa del Watford. It's Sergio Fernandez. In true serve, Richard Bushnell. Ollie. It doesn't sound how it's spelt. It's Ransons. Early years learning is fun. Terry Moore. Matt Professor. Alexander Muller. The Aviation 101. Secret millionaire masquerading as an electrician. Jifford's Electrical. It's Dragon's Den's favorite. It's Sockets. Sean Gary. Paul Tipton. Milbank Newman. Mr. Louis Brand. Smart Spark UK. No one knows their last name. It's Aaron, the electrical industry representative for the Caravan Club. It's Joe Robinson, Nick Erlam, Daddy B, Ben Manning, John Burns, 
Millie Dimbleby, Pink Pink and Pink. It's Darren Crannies, Serial Prize winner, Stephen Skillen, Brian Fatterty, Shodden, Nick Erlam, The Loose Goose. It's Mr. Renewables himself, Griff Thomas. He's on commission from Guinness, Pegasus Electrical and Control, Sergio Rivera, James Kane, Jessica Bancroft, East Power Engineering, Azri Electrical. It's absolutely outrageous. It's Neil Bridgman. He's famous on the challenge wall and has his own step. It's Nicholas Ramo, Craig Watson, Bill's Countryside Adventures, Theo Webster, Daniel Tarleton. It's the man with the fast hands, Rapid Ross Sands. It's the postman's favorite, Richard Coquelin, Bonnie B, Tom Sullivan, Ron Coyote, College Lecturer of the Year and Master Baker, Chris Horn, Andy C, Winston Smith. And finally, where is he tonight? He could be at college. He could be chefing up a madness. No one knows. It's Richard Gaunt. If you'd like to be included in next time's register, drop a comment on the stream. And don't you dare ditch us for the footy. Ha ha ha. I've been AI Joe. Happy viewing. Well, I don't know if I can thank AI Joe for that, but we ought to thank Joe, who is behind the camera. He's sitting next to Paul Elcott, who's put all this together. He actually gave up his Indian meal again today, didn't he? So he didn't come down for mass dabs. He actually stayed behind to make sure everything was running smooth. And we have. We've almost done the hour and a half that we expected for the show for the first time. Ben, I oh, really... Um, no, you're not going to tell you. Yeah, there you go. He finally broke out of smile. <laughs> Obviously, off camera, he's had a word with me. OK. But you've been great sports all day. It's been great to be here. And it's good that you've taken us all on that educational journey. And mm. it's not to be scared of these DC Chargers. So not thank you ever so much for that. Okay. And uh, serial winner. OK. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. so you didn't win any serial. OK, but you're a serial winner. You're going to make sure when you're back at work, there's plenty of post-its, maybe things printed off, links to videos and things absolutely. being sent out on global emails and all the rest of it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I'm be, already plotting. Yeah. Yeah, be, yeah. be as humble as uh, Ben would have been if he'd have won. That's what you got to remember. Well, I'm paying the £10 in one piece. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in a fortnight, Gordon. Who have we got next on? We have we got the team from... <coughs> Hold on, put my teeth back in. <coughs> All the good ones. <laughs> good ones, yeah. <laughs> we've, got, uh, we've got the team from Skarmy in uh, last week. And obviously, we know Skarmy because they make some fantastic isolators and lots of other equipment. But we're going to be looking a little bit at Airtex, actually, which is another... Another one of my uh, specialised subjects I used to like in the past. So we're going to be doing that stuff that's stuck to the ceiling, are we? Is that what we're doing? No, that's our text, Gary. Oh, right, okay, it's so Atex. It's, uh, okay, it's something so. we live with, obviously working with you a lot, and that's hazardous environment. <laughs> so <laughs> hopefully we'll be uh, explosive gases and things like that, noxious exhalations and things like that. So we'll be delving into a little bit of the electrical equipment, and I think we've obviously got the ideal environment here to test it out in, okay. especially after a trip down to Mastabs. Okay, talking so. of noxious things as well, thank you, Gordon, for joining joining me today as well. Rick's in the back, just finished off his food. And of course, we've had Jenny over there, or Miss uh, Jenny Penny. Okay. Je Jenny Penny. Penny. Yeah, yeah we've got <laughs> Odd Sod and the new James Bond. And on that note, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us right to the end, especially if you were live. You've done it on catch up. You deserve a bigger medal. Remember to get your comments in. We'll respond to as many of them as we can in the future, and it may drive other live streams. But make sure you check out the end credits. You might find yourself appearing in the following list. See you in two weeks.